Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 6, Episode 25. Listen here, before we get into it, before we get into it, I got to tell the people to subscribe. Before we get into it, I got to tell the people to like, share, comment, all the above. Keep the comments going. Now, Blair, can I ask my question? Yes. I said, can I ask my question? Yes. In the comments below, describe Nell as a mom based on what you saw. Describe Nell as a mom. Question number two, describe Alexis as a daughter. You ready? I'm ready. I am ready for this episode. Let's go. We are continuing dinner with the Fletchers, Mm -hmm. and we are at the point in the conversation where Nell is talking to their son, Chris, Yeah. and she asked him for the $3,000 that he already owed her, Mm -hmm. and he said that he gave it to her. Nell said, well, it was actually $5,000. You still owe me money. Yeah, you owe me money. (laughs) Then she brought up how her son, Lance, Mm -hmm. hired Chris Mm -hmm. and had to fire him. Yeah. Lance speaks up and he says that he, Chris, he didn't do what he was supposed to do pretty much. Chris was saying, you didn't give me my last check. He said you were sitting around and chilling. You were giving the employees the idea that that was something that was okay to do, especially since you're my brother. That's what Lance said to Chris. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now she... Apparently bought the kids' cars except for Alexis, according to Alexis. According to Alexis. Yes. Alexis says that her first car she saved up for. Mm -hmm. And then the Fletchers say that, look, we got you a lump sum of money. Mm -hmm. Less than a month later, you had a new car. She said, I had to get into a car accident in my hoopty in order for me to get the car while everybody else was in all their nice cars. Mm Mm-hmm. Lexi went years without talking to them because she felt she was treated differently. Mm -hmm. Lance says Lexi has a woe is me attitude. Mm -hmm. Lexi says that she's never been around the family, which was weird to say because she has been (laughs) in this blended family since she was 16 months old, according to now. Okay. But she says she don't be around. She says she's never invited on family vacations. Mm -hmm. She even said one vacation you invited the employees and you didn't invite me, the daughter. Yeah. And now said that was was an employee appreciation vacation okay <laughs> and then she says y'all were barely at my wedding mm-hmm. we were barely invited yeah they said you told us about the wedding last minute and we were barely on the invite list but we still came and we showed out for you yeah lexi says if they're going to lie she's going to leave and everybody can kiss her a listen here before we even go into when fletcher went outside when chris went outside what is your impression so far on this family blair There is a lot of hurt in this family. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to say. Come on, take us to therapy. And what surprises me in a way, but maybe it shouldn't be too surprising, is that both of their children came in at a very young age. Mm -hmm. So you would think that they would kind of know the flow of their family dynamic Mm -hmm. and how things go. But I think that the difference when it comes to Alexis is it sounds like Alexis was raised by her mother. Mm. And I think all of the other kids were raised in the same house with Nell and Fletcher because Mm. the two younger kids are Nell and Fletcher's kids together. Yeah. And then Lance, of course, not of course, but usually the mother cares for the child. So it sounds like to me that Alexis was able to see two sides of a way of living and maybe her mother wasn't living a certain way. Then now also tells us that sometimes uh, Alexis is told things that aren't necessarily true. So maybe it's coming from her mom. Maybe the mom has a little bit of jealousy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it just sounds like a lot of hurt and a lot of miscommunication. And pro- I wouldn't say necessarily, I believe the favoritism, but if you're not around or raised in the same household, Mm -hmm. you aren't going to do the same exact things as the people who all live together. And I think that's to be expected. But what do you think? Um, I, I, Alexis, I'm, I'm taking that. That's Chris's daughter. Yeah. And, um, but of course, 16 months in, like basically all like she knew as a family is, Chris and Nell, when they when they basically raise them around their own children and, and and much more, so they are brothers and sisters. As much as it may be a blended family and things like that, they've mm. been raised around each other. Yeah. Um, I paid attention to how the siblings was talking to Alexis, mm-hmm. and basically, you know how somebody can be wrong nine uh nine out of ten times, mm-hmm. 
but like that one time you gotta pay attention to. Yeah. I think Alexis is entitled. Mm. I think Alexis is a brat. Mm-hmm. I think Alexis may even have some of her story completely made up in her head. Yeah. Right? You're blocking your family. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? You say you don't get invited nowhere. I see you at the family dinner right now. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Um, I also paid attention. I went back to watch the last episode to see, um, did I sense this coming? Did you see the storm coming and right. things like that? When Alexis first came in with her husband, she hugged now. It was all happy, happy. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't until, quote unquote, it seems like whenever we talking about somebody grievances, because remember, she was talking to about Chris to Chris about how about the dogs and then Alexis was basically coming in Chattering. trying to exactly uh-huh. and that's how she got told shut that shut the hell up yeah you get what I'm saying so there is some brattiness even if it is correct even if everybody got a sports car mm-hmm. even if everybody got a luxury car mm-hmm. Nell even said I told your father that we shouldn't get any of these children these type of cars mm-hmm. um and she just make it sounds like it's not about the car even though she's using the car as a, watch this, vehicle mm-hmm. to talk about some mistreatment. But it's not about the car. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are just basically, they have a total different outlook on how um, the history of their relationship, that being the siblings and even the parents with this one person. So I am very interesting. Um, I'm very interested in getting down to the truth. Yeah. As a person who is not part of that family and not a therapist, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we just want to get in the business. Exactly. Now, mm-hmm. now, now, tell us what happened when Chris went outside, the father went outside to go talk to his daughter. Yeah, well, first, everyone's in the house and just pretty much irritated and annoyed with Alexis. The cousin said she wanted to reach over the table and smack her in the face. Yeah, like, <laughs> it, it's little things like that mm-hmm. right there. Like, pay attention to how the siblings treat their sister yeah you know what i'm saying now going back to your point that's what the niece said mm-hmm. the sister i think kayla next to her said um basically go ahead and block me b yeah you know what I'm saying? and then someone was like well she do this all the time so yeah. i don't so, know why you're getting upset so uh-huh. some would say mm, maybe alexis got a point because look how they talking about her when she storm off some may others may say look if we're doing the same dance all the time, we get tired of this. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Go ahead, Blair. And also what got me was when Alexis was walking out, she said she burned the whole house down. Well, that was at the uh, car. At the car. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, Fletcher goes out to talk to her at yeah. the car. He says that they've never mistreated her. She says that he wasn't there for her until she was 28. And he said, now nah, you're just lying and you're making me mad. Yeah. So he says, you can get the F on. Yeah. <laughs> And he walks back to the house to finish enjoying dinner with the family. He was over her at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, now that lets me know little statements like that in a sense of um, there's a difference between, from my perspective, of feeling hurt Mm -hmm. about mistreatment and feeling entitled about mistreatment. She, She gives all some entitlement, some type of brattiness, like saying to Blair what Blair just said about you go burn down the house. Mm-hmm. That's not to me. That don't sound like you're hurt by anything. It don't sound like I can fix nothing. No, it, like, <laughs> it sound it, like you got revenge in your heart against me for what? It it, it just sounds like it mm-hmm. just sounds very bratty, and just the idea of um, I'm not gonna go so hard on how they're talking at the dinner table because mm-hmm. I I ain't grow up cussing around my folks and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I I barely cuss. You get what I'm saying? But I'm mm-hmm. saying. Um, some will look at it and say she has a lack of respect based on how she's carrying a conversation with her mom, with her father. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Based on the language that she's using. But, you know, some people cuss and have that freedom to do so when they, especially when they're adults. Yeah. So I don't want to um, bunker down on that so much. But there is a, especially how Nell, um, reaction and talking to her there is a feeling of i'm tired of dealing with this mm-hmm. do you get what i'm saying like yeah. even during the even during the confessional she tells uh chris tells Nell, like you know that is our daughter mm-hmm. and 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 we still have to love her mm-hmm. and she's like 
I respect you for that, basically. Like, I respect your choice. Exactly. It like, went, I ain't got to do nothing, exactly, but I respect it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We go come back to Nell, and we go come back to Alexis. Continue. Right. Well, Stormy is talking to her husband, Courtney. Facts. She is talking about how she's stressed, not necessarily by Canvas Beauty, but trying to be a mediator between Tiffany and Kiki. Why? Which she don't need to be. Why? <laughs> Stormy doesn't want to see them have real beef. She feels that Tiffany's a little bit of a Karen and mm-hmm. Kiki might go off on her. Why? So, again, it's not real beef. It's mm-hmm. literally not real beef. Well, she says she doesn't want it to get there. To like Tupac and Biggie? Like, like, <laughs> like what do you mean? Like, okay, yeah. let's say it get there. What does real beef look like to Kiki and Tiffany? That they already don't talk to each other? Mm-hmm. Are they go right up on each other and start fighting? Like, what's real beef? Like, yeah. all of it is just fake anyway. Continue. Yeah. Well, she wants to bring them to the house. Mm-hmm. Courtney said, well, don't have no wine. Stormy mm-hmm. says she wants to give them a couple shots just so they can release their inhibitions. Okay. And Courtney says, well, don't take them around the main house. Take them somewhere where they can release all their anger. Mm-hmm. Out in the pasture somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stormy then talks about how Kyle has helped save the business. Mm-hmm. They are in a period where they can celebrate and they let go of a lot of people. Yeah. She never knew how to hire people in mm-hmm. the first place. But at this point, she's been able to do um, what her family has never seen been done in her family before. Okay. They couldn't have gotten to where they are now without getting rid of the snakes. Well, as soon as we say that, Courtney says he brought Junior back. Now, listen, now, I don't know if, if Junior is a snake. I don't know either. But, but the way that they basically put that conversation together, mm-hmm. that was wow. Yeah. Okay, continue. It was a big question mark. Mm-hmm. She's not too sold on the decision of having Junior back, but she is going to trust Courtney with his hiring decision. I'm going to say, I'm going to speak on what I don't know. I don't know uh, if they're equal owners in this, Mm -hmm. but um, I wonder how they actually deal with conflict of of different decisions, of like a different... um, the way they want to go about it. Yeah. Because she seems like, even though she's the owner, she seems like the type to be like, you know what, Courtney, I'm just going to trust you. Mm-hmm. And things like that. But then at the end of it, get left with like basically the mess that she got to fix. Yeah. You like it's on her to exactly. fire and, and, and that and talk, all stuff. It makes me think about the, the labels that's, that 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 got misprinted on, on the uh, bottles. Mm-hmm. So when she wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So do like, do you think, it's a good idea to hire Junior back? No. You don't think so? No. I think it's a bad decision to hire Junior back without telling Stormy. That is definitely a bad to decision. To me, listen, I really don't know Junior's character, honestly. Mm-hmm. So I'm not even going to go on here and trash his character. I'm only going by what we see. We didn't see a lot of him. Yeah. Because when we saw him, we saw him get fired. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but I think as a partner, Courtney, um, I don't want to say overstep because he, he could be equal partner, but... Hell, even if you are an equal partner, you should have a discussion. You gotta have a mm-hmm. discussion. Um, besides, make besides. Here's here's the thing, right? Stormy is uh, the wife of Courtney, of course, right? Mm-hmm. When when it's business, even though she's your wife, you don't want the wife attributes to kick in. Right, like you don't want to be submissive you don't in want the role it, as, as an equal business exactly, partner the exactly, way traditionally exactly, you would do exactly. in a marriage. You don't want to. You don't want to. Even though Courtney may not have done this, but I feel like in a way he kind of did. You don't want to manipulate that because mm-hmm. Junior said, "How does Stormy feel about that?" And he said, "Let me handle her." But he said that in a way that a husband would say to his wife, Versus besides a partner, a partner in an ownership. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you don't want to. You don't want to manipulate. And want to misuse um, her personality and all her attributes as a partner, as an owner, as a as a CEO, as a founder, and a wife. Mm-hmm. I feel like she's trusting um, you, Courtney, as a wife. But mm-hmm. we leave that to our marriage. You get what right. I'm saying? Uh-huh. When it comes to our business, our livelihood, I would like for you to come to me and have these discussions so we can come to where I don't have to trust um um you it can be a educated decision that we both make we make we make pros and cons lists and, and we then do it together and we do it uh-huh. together so that's the only thing i didn't like but you know we'll see we'll see 
Yeah, I felt the same way. I I felt like it was a mistake hiring Junior back, period. Mm -hmm. Because clearly there were issues with him um, that resulted in him firing. Mm. I don't know how much retraining. I think they did touch on how they tried to retrain him and talk to him and all this type of stuff. And it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Courtney brought him back in as a... You know we family. You know I got you. Well, you, you ain't got to worry. Well, you heard Courtney say mm-hmm. he have a soft spot for Junior. Yeah. He, and, he has a soft and he really wants the best for him. And mm-hmm. I can understand that. But that's blurring the line. I say this. They're trying not to do. I say, Courtney, hire him for your 100% on a business. Mm-hmm. A business that you own 100% to where only you can have the consequences. And if it mess up and if he mess up, only you will feel it. Then hire him for that. Yeah. But when it comes to... um your wife, even though that's her cousin and things like that, and you probably see yourself doing a, a good thing, and I and that's why I said I'm not trying to trash Courtney, but I'm I'm just trying to say like I think he um, misused his power as a husband as a husband mm-hmm. and blurred the lines with business. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like you can't hit me as the owner of let 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 me deal with her. No, who is her? Her yeah. her is the founder. Mm-hmm. Her is the owner. You get what I'm saying? So um, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Anything else? That's all. Let's move on. Martel is finally moving. Shout out to Martel for finally moving out and giving and letting Chris keep his job. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> letting Chris keep his job as like as like a relative to like these folks, man. Continue. And he is going into another house that he is leasing. Okay. So okay. Okay. He's got his brothers and his uncles assisting him in the move. He is moving like a thief in the night in the middle of the night. Uh, I wouldn't say he's, thief in the night, but okay, I hear you. <laughs> he says that he's going to have some surgery um, to get rid of some of his bags, I guess, under his eyes. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to be able to move after the surgery. Okay. To me, it sounds like that's why he moved. He wasn't in a hurry to move when Chris was telling him he needed to, but now he want to get pretty and he can't do anything after surgery. He found a way to get it together. I don't know how you put those two together, <laughs> but listen here. The, Maybe it's a reach, but I'm here. happy with it. The anti-Martel <laughs> of a fan group, boy, y'all strong. Okay. okay y'all strong. Continue. Martel calls Chris uh-huh. and tells him that he moved out. Chris uh, is happy. He does a little happy dance. Mm-hmm. And he they, his little. Yeah. <laughs> and Chris also tells him, don't talk to my wife crazy. Mm-hmm. Martel tells us, the audience, like, look, Chris knows that me and Nell have tempers, and sometimes we can go at it at times. Yeah. He said um, basically what he needed to say to satisfy his wife that he talked to me. Mm-hmm. That's how Martel took it versus Chris really being like, watch your mouth. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Even though it may seem like, based on the words that Blair used right there, it wasn't as uh, damning as the previews made it seem like. It, it mm-hmm. seemed like two friends talking to each other. And one friend just reminded him, like, hey. Yeah. Don't just don't. Relax. Relax with my wife. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It wasn't no, like, I don't like you no more. It wasn't no, like, you know, if this happens again, there'll be consequences. It basically was like, yeah, I heard I heard, I heard you talking slick with my wife. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like like, like one of those. Um, it's so funny how Martel just see things. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, 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 it's, it's an interesting brain he has. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think. Chris had to do anything to to satisfy his wife at all. Nell is pretty strong. Yeah. And and put it like this, even though a couple episodes ago, we clearly said that that was two friends having a heated conversation. Mm-hmm. We did not feel like Martel disrespected Nell, and we didn't feel like Nell disrespected Martel in that conversation. Um, but in that in that conversation, I just felt like um how he put it like oh he had to say something to satisfy his wife i don't think it was i don't think it was that deep martel no. i think it was basically like hey look my wife told me about y'all little heated conversation mm-hmm. hey don't don't come to our house with with yeah with, with, don't get in no heated discussions exactly. with my wife exactly. that's not necessary exactly there's yeah. no reason for y'all to be having heated discussions <laughs> exactly because because both of y'all are friends yeah and and that's not your wife you yeah know what i'm saying so like i understand i know you happy martel is out the house and chris can keep his job basically yeah so i'm very healthy let these people sell their homes and he was like and i'm sure you know they just needed to give me some time i wasn't just gonna move out with nowhere that to stay is, that is weird <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> he's like and now the people i'm sure they're happy they can sell their home i found somewhere to live well, listen here man you, oh my gosh you are a interesting guy <laughs> 
Continue. <laughs> yes. Well, Mel meets up with her bestie, Brittany. Yeah. And they are getting some orders together for her. Okay. Brittany wasn't at the name change ceremony. And she told Mel, what she had told her before, her niece was turning 16 and Sweet she 16. was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Brittany said she was there spiritually, mm-hmm. mentally. She also helped Mel with coming up with ideas before it. So she wants to let Mel know, like, I was in full support of what she had going on. It mm-hmm. wasn't like I was on Martell's side. It mm-hmm. wasn't nothing crazy. Brittany was there when Mel met him, when she married him, Mm -hmm. and when they divorced. And she, even though she understands why Brittany was gone, she still kind of feels a way that her best friend wasn't at her name change ceremony. I'm sorry. If I was your best friend, I probably, as crazy as it may sound, I'll probably be there, but Mm -hmm. I definitely would feel weird. (laughs) (laughs) Because when I see, and I show up, when I show up and I see that wedding Mm -hmm. decorations, and I see you walking out of the aisle by yourself, and I'm looking like, Mm -hmm. And she's saying vows to herself. I would have been like, okay, I I, I should have went to my niece's birthday. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. But I understand Mel. I understand. No, I did feel a way about Mel trying to hold Brittany to task about, about that. Say, I'm just piece. like Mel, you are a grown lady, mm-hmm. and I understand this is a big thing for you. But we cannot be coming and jumping to every uh, ceremony, uh, party, party, mm-hmm. everything that you want to do. To commemorate all these different stages in your life. My my niece (laughs) turned 16, man. Exactly. This 16 is once in a lifetime. And, you know, maybe your name from Holt to Rogers is once in a lifetime. But Mm -hmm. you're grown. Okay? (laughs) You're okay. Exactly. You're okay. We'll hang out later. And then on top of that, I Mm -hmm. told you. So, like, stop acting like you're holding something against me. I told you that I wasn't going to be there. Yes. You know, because of you. Brittany says, okay, Mel, well, how can I make this up to you? Mm -hmm. Because I'm pretty much tired of running in circles around here with you. Mm -hmm. And Mel says, well, you can help me pick the right guy oh no no nope <laughs> i'm telling this right now if you have a best friend that's talking about help me pick the right guy when you pick that person for once she that person rather not gonna like it or when it goes to hell they gonna blame you don't don't have me involved in 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 picking your demise okay <laughs> i don't want no parts okay yeah. i want no parts well Brittany thinks mel needs time uh-huh. consistency mm-hmm. a look Mm-hmm. versatility and a little bit of height oh man and they say they are not picking in huntsville man mel said well this might be some international vagine okay i hear you <laughs> listen here it's so funny hearing uh th- these women especially mel in her position being divorced and newly getting um now she's dating and things like that but they women always go taller you know what I mean? Six feet ain't tall no more. She's like a real six three. I'm like, man, you know, real six three. That's an NBA player. But you know that that scene was very funny. The fact that they wouldn't even say his name. They over here call him little buddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So look, man, I'm happy. Mar- I'm happy. Not Marta. I'm happy. Melody is happy. Um, and that that chapter in her life is closed. Um, at least that chapter. You yeah. know, hopefully down the line. Um, the more we know, the more time go by, that book will be completely closed with the child custody case and things like that. Um, that everybody can just move on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Continue. Yes. Well, Nell and Chris meet up to talk about the family dinner. This is the scene of the night for me, guys. Yeah. Chris doesn't think the car that Alexis keeps bringing up is indicative of her being mistreated. He mm-hmm. feels like it's materialistic. Okay. Nell feels that she gets the short end of the stick when it comes to Alexis. Stop right there. Mm-hmm. Stop right there. That makes me look at Nell. Like, now I got the spotlight on Nell. Okay. As the parent and things like that. Because before we even got there, you know, when Chris first showed up, he had things in his hand. And he sure could tell, oh, boy, what, what did I do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And... Now she's about to go, as Blair about to prep her, she's about to go basically into the different ways of how they may approach her mm-hmm. compared to how they may approach him yeah. and things like that. Walk us through that because this is, this is very interesting to me. Could, yeah. Continue. Well, she has been in Alexis's life since uh-huh. Alexis was 16 months. Yeah. And she's also talking about how she's been texting her son, Chris, calling mm-hmm. him, and he hasn't been responding to her. Facts. Now asks or says they treat you. They come to you. They're more comfortable coming mm-hmm. to you. Pretty much she's wanting to get Chris's perspective on why that is. Yeah. Chris says when they go to you, you go straight to 100. Yeah. And he says, when they approach me, I'm more still understanding, trying to figure out what happened, where you're kind of 
annoyed with them because mm-hmm. they're grown and they should know better, which they are grown and they should know better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nell says uh, she deals with a lot and she gets drained mm-hmm. and she handles things her own way. Mm-hmm. She thinks that they can avoid certain things mm-hmm. and she is the type to say, I told you so because I did tell you what was going to happen. Okay. They keep messing up, according to Chris, uh, because she will give them hell, but she's going to come in and save the day every time. Okay. And now says, well, Chris, you help out. You give them money, but for some reason, you get paid back. They always get you your money back, mm. but they don't pay her back. Mm. And now doesn't really know where to go with this when it comes to their kids. And Chris brings up, we possibly need counseling. And they agree that a third party would be helpful. Now mm-hmm. she even talks about, I guess she's a counselor in the daycare mm-hmm. and talks to parents. And she is saying, you know, I'm able to counsel other people. And although she might be able to do it with her kids, they might need someone else to come in and speak so they could hear it clearly from someone else. Okay. Um, I know mothers just like now. Mm-hmm. I, I, I recognize it. I actually love mothers just like Nell. Mm-hmm. Um, how would I describe Nell as a mom? That was one of my questions, right? She said, which is actually, it was actually interesting. She said she texts Chris. She called Chris. Talk about her son. Mm-hmm. Um, no answer, no answer, no answer. After just having the dinner, talking about how we don't have communication. Now she's reaching out and she feels wronged. Yeah. Right. She feels wrong, and that's not right. Mm-hmm. Nell is someone that you want in your corner because she's going to fight for you. She's going to she's going to fight an army for you. Yeah. Right. But the minute you on the wrong side, or the minute that she feels jaded by her being nice to you, mm-hmm. and you basically treat her. As if she didn't go out her way and bail you out of jail or didn't go out her way to get your dog or go out the way of of basically you say I straight mistreat you. Like the minute that she feels like she was taken advantage of now that person that will fight the army becomes the army that's going to fight against you. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why with people like that, even though you may watch it and be like, how can you wipe your hands clean of your children? Right. Like, like basically like she, I'm not saying that she don't love Alexis, but you could definitely see like her hands is clean off of it as if like, she's like distancing herself off. And she's just like, look, it is what it is. Yeah. Cause to her point, she's like, they are adults. And basically I am going to basically wipe my hands of it. I'm going to tell you, I told you. So there's some things you don't have to go through. Nell is the type to where you don't want to push that person to that to that point it takes a lot to get them there mm-hmm. to where they wipe their hands clean of you and they and she may have feel and she may feel like her niceness is being taken advantage of that's why she holler mm-hmm. that's why she's uh chris chris described it as when they talk to you something just clicks like you just go there and things like that and she probably sees like how come they don't do that with you yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like look, we're married, we have conversations, you feel the same pain I feel. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? But yet I'm viewed as the villain. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And um that's very interesting. What did like you think about this scene and what did you think about Nell as a parent and things like that? Even the difference between them two, Nell and Chris, the parents. Well, I wanted to touch on one thing that she said when she feels like that she gets the short end of the stick when it comes to Lexi. Mm-hmm. Um And this could all be speculation, but, you know, Lexi is Chris's biological daughter. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he probably does give her a lot of grace. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, he even said that there were points in her life where he wasn't as present because he was going through hard times. Not necessarily until she was 28. Yeah, that's wild. (laughs) But I think that there's a lot that goes into Alexis. And now is not going to be the one who can do any type of like disciplining or Mm -hmm. talking to or anything like that. Like not that Chris won't allow her, but it won't mean anything to Alexis. Um, And it will more so make her upset at Nell and her dad for why is she talking to me? Why is she doing X, Y, and Z? But that's, but that's the thing though. Uh, Like, like Nell doesn't have an end with Alexis to, I don't know though, to get her together. That's just what it seems like to me. Because to me, I feel like Alexis may take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. I feel like, Hey, I have an end when I'm agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. I have an end when like, when like you don't mess up, 
You get what I'm saying? So how come you listen to me? I saw when they came in, you gave me a hug, you all smiling, dancing with me and all that stuff. But like when you're wrong, you can't be wrong. Mm-hmm. Or or basically you can't be disciplined when wrong and things like that. Like mm-hmm. like you want the benefit of basically being being part of the family. All of the materialistic exactly. things. But like uh-huh. but when it comes to like when you mess up and talk to me crazy or when you block us and when you basically have one of your little tyrants and stuff like that you told me you want to burn down the house now all of a sudden i'm wrong for basically snapping at you yeah it's like that's where i can feel now kind of like detaching like look that's look like like i can't i can't deal with someone like that yeah because it's not even when somebody start treating you like that you don't even see them in the title that they are as daughter or friend or things like that. Mm-hmm. You you see them strictly for their personality. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I can't deal with people like that. Yeah. Because you're going to kill me. Yeah. Or I'm going to kill you before you kill me. Mm-hmm. Continue. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And then when it comes to Chris and Nell mm-hmm. and their differences in parenting, mm-hmm. like I do agree. And I, and I do feel like, you know, she probably has been pushed to her edge. Yeah. And also... You know, she's probably is emotionally drained. And I mean, she owns her own business, mm-hmm. all this type of stuff. So she probably doesn't want to deal with the foolishness anymore. Do like you think it's Chris fault? The I, father. I don't think it's his fault. I think I, I'm not going to use the word fault, but I think um, I don't think he see this is not criticism, Chris. I know you're watching Chris Fletcher. <laughs> I, I don't think he tries to be as cool, calm and collected. I just think it's very easy to be that way if the other person's already on a hundred. I don't know. I feel like like I feel like well, bec- I didn't even fin- oh, finish no, my thoughts. But but that I ain't finished my thought. I just I was talking about Chris and Ellen comparing. I them. just finished a sentence. Oh my goodness, Chris. <laughs> Go ahead, Blair. I literally I literally just said it's easy for him to be that way if someone's already at a hundred and I was gonna explain that. Before you even started saying that, Go ahead. I was still talking. Go ahead. <laughs> but go ahead. No, I'm no, saying I forget now. Yeah, you said what? I forget what I was saying now. So go ahead. Okay, so what I'm saying is, I think it's easy for him to be at a lower level if she's already at a max level. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's like intentional, but he says like something about her just clicks when like it comes to them, when they come to her. I think it's just like because she's at a hundred. I think to him, he's like, I gotta bring the house down, and not so much of like putting them against each other. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Do you like remember what you were going to say? Well, no, but now I'm to the point where I'm just like, well, I just feel like Chris, that's just his personality and that's who he is. Okay. I just don't think he gets riled up. Even the whole thing with Martel probably would have got me riled up. You think so? <laughs> yes. Okay. And I think Chris being as calm, cool, and collected as he was with Martel and not calling the cops on him mm-hmm. just shows his character. And it seems like he is very patient with Why? people. Why is he calling the cops? Because Martel, it was time for him to leave. Yeah, the only guy called the cops, not him. Oh, okay. And also, but you saw him getting riled up with his daughter, though. It, mm. Like, it's there. Yeah. And and I think it will help Nell's case if they probably see more of that. Mm-hmm. So, to where she ain't the one always going off. Because it seemed like whenever she go off, they run to him. Yeah. To where... He may feel the same way, but he's not expressing it the same way. Mm-hmm. It may help the whole thing if he may be like, look, you effing up too, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, pay her the money for the dogs, yeah. and I'm about to start yelling like her. Mm-hmm. But I think because someone's, when someone's at that high, I just think it's just easy for him just to be like, look, I got to calm her down. I got to calm you down because y'all about to go at each other too much. Yeah. And things like but that. But I still feel like when it comes to now, mm-hmm. in the way that she goes off on the kids, I just don't. I just don't like that. I just don't feel like you have to do that. Like, it can be as simple as, I'm not helping you with this. Figure it out. But the thing is, I think why Nell gets so upset by it is because she knows she is going to bail them out. Because she, of course, loves them and Mm -hmm. wants the best for them. So that's probably what makes it that much more frustrating is because she knows she's going to save the day. Mm -hmm. But my train of thinking is, Nell, don't stress yourself out. Say no. No, I don't know. I don't know. And it doesn't have to be no to everything, but it can be no to some things. They can feel it in some areas. I I, I don't know, because when you're dealing with kids or when you live, especially since they all live together and grew up together, y'all know y'all know each other buttons. Mm-hmm. And sometimes with children, 
they take advantage and they push your buttons when they know it's your buttons. Yeah. And things like that. That so, is true. So it's very hard to be like, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. They all, they made you angry already. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's not even the actions, the things like that. Something as simple as, like, this is like our son. He's not even, he's not answering my texts. Mm-hmm. He's not answering my calls. I have to ask my husband, have you heard from Chris? And I'm over here watching his dog. <laughs> Walking his dog every day. <laughs> That is a button you're pushing on. Yeah, dude. Dude, like and that's then, irritating. But, but then you want me to be like, you know what, Chris? You don't want to talk to me. Da 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 da. It's like it's like you're you're not treating me as a person now. It's like now it's it's, it's getting to the levels of disrespect. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I do feel like Nell could, based on what we've seen, she could dial it back just a little bit though, mm. because I think maybe she feels like. And maybe I have to take the rose colored glasses off because she is talking to full grown adults at that table. No one at no one at that table is is is, is a child. So there is a feeling of, hey, y'all are grown. Mm-hmm. Why are y'all why am I still mm-hmm. basically doing things as if you was a teenager? Yeah. And things like that. So I don't know. We we definitely will see more of them. Yeah. Go ahead. While Stormy invites Kiki and Tiffany to her house, uh-huh. Kiki arrives first, and uh, they arrive in Stormy's guest house. So okay. she took her husband's suggestion of not bringing all that mess today. Okay. Main house. <laughs> well, Kiki, she arrives, and she's talking a little bit about how hot she is. The methadone makes her sweat more than usual. Mm-hmm. And Stormy has a soft spot for her uh, for disclosing that. Mm-hmm. Stormy asks how her and Tisha are doing, and Kiki doesn't want to address it. She blocked Tisha. She couldn't reach her if she tried. Okay. That's yeah. So weird, man. Kiki is saying that she got Tisha to where she is today. She probably wouldn't have gone to college if it wasn't for Kiki. She wouldn't have the life she has. She wouldn't be living in Huntsville. Mm. Stormy said the interview Tiffany did made the issue deeper between Kiki Mm -hmm. and Tiffany. And then we see Tiffany arrive, but she has the baby. Okay. That that was intentional to me. You think so? How so? Because I'm not going to be hollering and screaming and really getting my issue off with the baby in your hand. So why not? <laughs> like me, I, I'm a, I look because the baby. I'm 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 just sensitive to the fact that it's a newborn baby. I'm True. not going to stress the baby out. That's and facts. and the thing is, maybe it is fine for her to bring the baby. I mean, Lou's working. She's been bringing the baby everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Fine, but it did kind of feel like what an opportune time to have a baby when we need to hash something out. Well, well, to your point, if we gotta hash something out, that don't mean we gotta yell. Yeah. Maybe the baby means you're definitely not going to throw a drink on me. <laughs> and you're definitely not going to yell. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I don't understand this. Mm-hmm. Help me understand it, Blair. Let's talk with the whole Tisha and Kiki thing. You block Tisha? Yeah, like Tisha did something to you. You're the aggressor. Mm-hmm. Like, how can you be sorry for your actions but then block her. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, you showing no remorse. You seen as if you're the victim. I don't like people who play the victim, especially when they victimize people. Mm-hmm. You came in there on hots. You came in there being disrespectful, taking cars out of stormy hand. Talk about here, 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 here. You came there throwing drinks on her. You came there disrespecting Maurice and Kimmy's house. You came there, basically, people got to talk you down and whatever. You and your husband came there ready to fight and things like that. Granted, you was provoked by Marcel because he's like, you know, drug testing and things like that. But yet, you blocking folks? Mm-hmm. Like, you should be reaching out to folks on some light like, look. I want to change how I'm viewed this season. Because how I'm viewed this season, I am off my rocker based on things like that. Because we still don't know what happened at Costco. Nope. We still don't know. Like, that's complete. Now, we're on a whole different story to where now you haven't shown any type of stability when it came to your emotions. You went with beefing with Tisha, and now you're beefing with Tiffany and things like that. And I don't even know how valid this beef is. To be honest, because people go talk bad about you. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean I have to basically like make amends with you. Yeah, I could just be like, you know what? Tiffany just someone I don't want to be friends with. Yeah, all she do is talk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even saying Tiffany was right. I'm just don't understand this whole extra thing of like, a let's basically come together and basically talk about how we don't like each other. Like y'all don't like each other. Tiffany really don't care about you. 
you don't really care about Tiffany. Yeah. So I don't really know what's there to like really to fix. What what do you think about that scene? I felt like it was just a scene for Stormy. I mean, Stormy needed something to do. Oh, uh, I, 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 I ain't even view it that way. <laughs> yeah, like Stormy, she's trying to insert herself in the middle. She's trying to be in the mix. She's like, yeah. we're going to have a sit down because Stormy wanted to have a scene at her house mm-hmm. with the girls and let it make TV. That's what it felt like to me. Mm. It just seemed like Stormy, not to say she doesn't have a storyline, but... <sighs> It seems like her storyline is her business, and we're only getting a small amount of information about that. Yeah. It's kind of vague. I appreciate them talking about family snakes, things like that. But at the same time, y'all could go deeper and get a little bit more specific if you really wanted to get into her situation. Do but you, it seems, you want names? Not necessarily names, but we could have a sit down with the person who forged the signature. Well, why would I want to talk to that person? <laughs> Can we amend that relationship? That's what I'm saying. That's a real issue. But we're sitting here, like you said, talking to Kiki and Tiffany, talking about why they don't like each other because they don't. Exactly. <laughs> you, like, is it like so. like Kiki and Tiffany eyes haven't done anything to be liked, mm-hmm. and and and, t- and in Kiki eyes, everybody is wrong. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. They, they talking about they talking about an interview that happened off the off the screen off the show. With Carlos yeah. King. Speaking of Carlos King, let me speak to Carlos King. Can I speak to Carlos King? Go ahead. Mr. Carlos King, I know you're watching. You have struck gold with the Fletcher's family. Yeah. They carried this episode. Mm-hmm. And listen here. If I was you, I would put a notice out to everybody on this cast <laughs> that, hey, there going to be some pink slips next season. If everybody ain't on pull, they straight. Listen, I can watch a whole episode on just the Fletcher. I, it was to the point where I was watching the show, and any scene that didn't have Nell and Chris in it last night, I was like, let's hurry up and get past it. <laughs> right. Yeah, they were the meat and potatoes. They was the meat, potatoes, and appetizers. The, they was all mm-hmm. of it and things like that. And I think you struck gold with them. I see a spinoff. I see more of them. I see Nell and Chris definitely being on next season. Oh yeah, definitely next season and things like that. But to your point, maybe Stormy do need a storyline. But my thing is, I don't want to say that they they need to create drama and things like that. If things right with her, because now it, the story is no longer about Marceau and and like a hundred dollars. The storyline is no longer about um her mother and her aunt going face to face and things mm-hmm. like that. It seems like outside of drama, there's nothing really bad going on in stormy's life and things like that like which is fine but show all the greatness i mean like let's just get but it's very vague let's see you at work or something you Mm -hmm. know what i mean something i i don't know i don't know i don't know anything else you thought about the episode anything you thought um at the episode at all and in like totality just i just really enjoyed seeing the fletchers their dynamic i hope that they do bring us into counseling with the kids and i would want to learn more i don't want to write alexis off completely because i feel like there might still be a little bit of truth to it oh yeah yeah yeah. but um i'd like to see how much is true and how much is uh emotions maybe i don't know what's true Mm-hmm. I don't know what's true. I think she's using that car because they said she bring up this car thing all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, that car is supposed to represent something. Maybe like mistreatment, maybe not equal treatment with everybody else. Maybe favoritism. Who knows? You yeah, know that's what, what she was saying. Yeah, um, all that. Because even, even Chris said, granted, you see how Chris and Nell is today. Who they are today is not what they were back in the day raising kids. He said, look, that was a hard time in my life. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And hard time doesn't necessarily mean money. Remember, there was a time where um, Nell and him was separated for for a little bit because I think he cheated yeah. and things like that. So it it could have been a lot of things internally that he was dealing with, a lot of things that Nell was dealing with. Their marriage, they probably had times they times they had to fix their own marriage and then get back to the family. Right, you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's definitely um an interesting thing. Um, but no, the Fletchers, y'all, y'all, y'all definitely breathe life into this series. Uh, one thing I know. When I talk to people about this show, they say it's the same storyline, same storyline, story, same storyline. Y'all can't say that about that this episode. Nah. Y'all can't say nothing about the next mm-hmm. episode. Anything else? That's it. Y'all be good. Bye. Bye.